Oh boy, this is what we call a tease in the business, isn't it? We had ourselves yesterday the video that we made talking about Kyle Dubas leaving the Toronto Maple Leafs, and long story short, this was a pretty big deal. The guy's contract was going to expire, we all kind of knew heading into the season that he wasn't going to have a contract, so the future was all but confirmed for Dubas. And with the announcement yesterday, we made the video saying, hey, he's not going to be the Maple Leafs GM anymore, they're going to go separate ways. And the way the statement was phrased on the Toronto Maple Leafs social media, it made it seem like this was an amicable parting of the ways, where both parties felt like this was the appropriate move, and the Maple Leafs would be moving on, and Dubas made the choice to step down himself. But yesterday, or should I say, a few hours after we made our video, we had ourselves the Brendan Shanahan press conference. And this was kind of a big deal, it was a really big deal in fact, because Shanahan, if you assume everything he said during the presser was 100% correct, kind of did what it was that everybody wanted him to do, and that was just pretty much go off. Brendan Shanahan ended up revealing what essentially was the entire timeline of Kyle Dubas' last year as the Toronto Maple Leafs GM, and Shanahan goes out in very intricate detail as to how things went to the point where Dubas was no longer welcomed as the GM of the team. Not because it was an amicable parting of the ways, or the Leafs and Dubas felt like this would have been the best choice possible to see Dubas leave. No. The way it was phrased, Brendan Shanahan went out there and did the deed himself. So... What I did was I pretty much compiled a list of notes from the Shanahan press conference going over the Kyle Dubas firing timeline, and I'm going to use that word firing because based off of how Shani goes out there and talks about it, it very much seems like Kyle Dubas might have just been straight up fired. Shanahan said that in the middle of March, he approached Kyle Dubas and said he has seen enough that he wants Kyle to be the GM going forward. This was because of the trade deadline period, what Kyle Dubas did heading into that period, as well as what he did heading into the season. Shanahan said he had seen enough. I like it. I like the vision you're going out there and building. And of course, Shanahan had his compliments as well, going out there and saying initially that Kyle Dubas did a really good job and building the team and he had a vision, etc, etc. But in the middle of March, Shanahan approached Kyle said, yeah, I want you to come back. And Kyle Dubas came back about a week later saying, yeah, he's comfortable with that and moving forward with that idea too. So back in the middle of March, it was very apparent that both sides, the Leafs and Dubas, were interested in bringing together an extension. Shanahan also said that during this conversation, or at some point in time, he had already talked with Kyle about the difficulties of the job on family, and how it was a prominent idea that was not necessarily getting in the way, but it was just worth bringing up, because Shanahan did say that it's a job that definitely does have its fair share of difficulties in regards to personal relationships and family, because, I mean, it's not really surprising. You're under pressure in one of the most crazy sports markets in the world, and you are the guy making all the decisions on who comes, who leaves, who stays, who goes. So, they talked about that, but Shanahan said that at that point in time, they were thinking that Kyle was willing to come back, and they were also interested in bringing him too. This changes afterwards. When watching Kyle Dubas's press conference at the end of season media availability, at that point, that was the dramatic shift in Shanahan's thinking, that, as Kyle expressed, he may not want to be the Leafs' general manager. The press conference aired a few days ago. It was the end of a six-hour session of interviews and questions and answers. It was very exhausting, not gonna lie. But Kyle Dubas did go out there and pretty much say that family is a really big thing to him, and there was an air of uncertainty in the way he was answering these questions, which, if you're Brendan Shanahan, is kind of weird because, wait a minute, just a few months ago in March, we were both saying that we wanted Kyle to come back. He said he wanted to come back. We said we wanted him to come back. And so now, in the season-ending press conference, he is reticent about coming back now? What gives? Dubas then said that he would have his agent call Shanahan, and on Thursday, Shanahan said that the agent did give him a call and presented a new financial package in a brief conversation. 
just before dinner as well, Kyle then emailed Shanahan saying he wanted to be the GM once more. And so there was sort of a period of silence for a few days where Kyle Dubas, after saying these things to the media, ended up leaving Shanny hanging for a little bit. And the only contact that Shanahan got after a few days was the agent saying, hey, my guy wants to be your GM and he wants more money. I don't know about you, but there's something fishy going on here with the way Kyle Dubas handled this situation. Mid-March, both parties are on the same side. At the end of the season, Dubas says he doesn't really know if he's going to come back or if he's really for sure in the game. And then he ghosts Shanahan for a few days, only to come back saying that he wants more money. Like, from that perspective and the way Shanahan, the Maple Leafs, and all these people were being treated by Dubas and the way Dubas wanted to do this negotiation, you could completely understand why Shanahan's conclusion after that was that he had gotten to a different place about how he felt about the future of the Leafs and what was best. A gap rose within the contract status, and he felt differently. He woke up yesterday morning, drove to Kyle's office, and informed him they would not renew his contract. And so, when you phrase it all like that, it really does appear that Kyle Dubas wasn't a part of an amicable parting of the ways. Nah, it looks straight up like he was just fired. They said, okay, we're not going to bring you back. That's it. We know they wanted to bring him back. Back in mid-March, they wanted to do so. They just didn't get the contract done. Okay, it's the playoffs, it's the end of the regular season, it's whatever. Kyle Dubas said he didn't want this to be a distraction, and that's fine. 100% it makes sense. But to be super uncertain in the face of the public eye, only to ghost Shanahan and then come back later saying that you do want to be the GM but you want more money in that role, that's fishy. That, that really is fishy. That's not a way to act in a professional setting. Now, I will say, while this does make a lot of sense now as to why the Maple Leafs moved on from Dubas, it still is quite alarming. To see the fact that Shanahan was even allowed to talk about this in the first place, I think the Steve Dangle video was going over this exact same point, but it feels really slimy having Shanahan air all of this out to the media and just go into so much intricate detail on the timeline, the money, what Kyle Dubas was potentially thinking, and what Shanahan felt towards Dubas in this moment. Like, I can't really recall any sort of a press conference where we learned this much beef within the span of however many minutes that Brendan Shanahan press conference was. We had learned so much. And we also had ourselves Jason Spezza, who had resigned from his position of the Maple Leafs as well. Although everybody that has been reporting on this has said that Spezza ended up resigning, not because of the Kyle Dubas stuff, it was before the press conference with Shanahan was done, but who really knows? Who really knows why Spezza ended up leaving, why this entire thing went down at the same time as Dubas pretty much getting the can from Toronto, too. It's going to be very interesting seeing where the Leafs go next because, I mean, you still have these contract negotiations you have to go through. Matthews and Nylander need money. Who's going to be negotiating that? You know what, Toronto? You guys should get a former player to be your GM. Yeah, how about Jim Benning? That sounds so good. I'd love to see Jim Benning be the GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs, wouldn't you? But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about Kyle Dubas, Brendan Shanahan, and the entire press conference that Shanahan had regarding Dubas. Full out mentioning what happened, going by names, and just airing everything out on a timeline. And pinpointing the exact moment when Shanahan himself felt, yeah, I don't think we can keep Kyle. I don't think this is the guy that fits our desire for what the Maple Leafs are supposed to build long term. And I'm not going to say that it's Shanahan's fault, like he's being a big bad meanie. No, I'm not saying that. I think Kyle Dubas, based off of the way that Shanahan told the story, probably behaved inappropriately. But at the end of the day, the fact that we're able to say that, the fact that we know these details, that is crazy to me. So, thoughts in the comment section below about the Maple Leafs and their GM situation going forward. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And, bye. <laughs>